Welcome, this is the curl release, uh, curl 8.2.1 and uh, I am, as you know, I'm Daniel Stenberg. Uh, I uh, do these release presentations every time we do a release of curl. So yeah, I work for Wolf SSL, that's my website uh, and uh, I, you can reach me on Mastodon on the address at the top. So this is a patch release this time. Uh, we did a the big release, the dot zero release last week, and now we're back and I'll show you, I'll talk a little bit about numbers. There's not going to be any security announcements and there are no changes or particular new features in this release. It's just a patch release. So we have a bunch of bug fixes. I will talk about some of them. It's only been seven days since the last release. So we don't have that many and I'm going to reiterate something about pending removals and reiterate something about coming what might be coming next for for future releases or, or short term next releases so this is release 221 and you might you might have seen that we have a slightly higher release frequency this year um, than previous year uh, that is because we have this new policy of trying to reduce the time windows where we have re known regression. So basically we are a little bit more keen on doing patch releases now than we were previous years. So that's also why we do more of these patch releases. Maybe this is a, um, a new setup we will use even more often going further forward. So this short release cycle uh, we had 20 contributors and seven of them were new and we had 13 authors who contributed code that we merged into git and three of them were new and um, yes a lot of people are helping out that's awesome and as i said this is seven days since the previous release and we're up to 9259 days since inception a long time we're actually at the point that we're soon we will have more documented bug fixes than we have days. So in the beginning, we did bug fixes at a fairly slow rate. And recently, over the last few years, we're doing bug fixes at the rate of roughly three or a little bit more than three bug fixes per day. So over time, we will reach the point where we have more bug fixes than days since inception. Boring fact. Uh, okay, we have 27 documented bug fixes for uh, landed in this release since the previous release in these seven days. And I will just, I, I've selected a few of them that I think might be interesting to talk about and might affect a few users. So let's talk about them. You'll go to the change log on the website to read uh, the full list. Uh, that's going to be fun for you, but I'm going to just talk about eight of them so first this is a very specific and particular we uh, updated the configure script now to check for this particular ng http2 function but basically this is the thing so when when you when you use curl for http2 we use this library called ng http2 to do the binary uh, frame handling of in, uh, http2 the protocol so anyone who's using um curl with HTTP2 is using uh, also this NGHTTP2 library and recently we started to use this function which was introduced in a NGHTTP2 version called 1.15 I believe anyway it was released in 2016 and we accidentally didn't check for this so if you would use an even older version of this library you would get a link error when you build curl. Now we verify that we, you're actually using a new enough library for curl to use it. It's, it's you need that new enough them being it has to be newer than seven years old. Um, I think that's a fair requirement. Uh, otherwise you ha will have to do without an uh, uh, HP2 support. We also fixed this tiny little thing in the OS 400 build. So now you can actually build curl for the OS 400 correctly again. Um, and, and this is a strange one. I don't actually know when or why, but at some point during recent times, the build procedure that when you, when you build curl, the command line tool, you get the man page included uh, 
all the text from the man page, get, page gets included so that you can do curl dash dash manual that command uh, that option will output the entire man page for you so typically you will pipe that to less or something and then read through it so uh, you don't have to do man curl you can do curl dash dash manual and at some point the the build uh, procedure stopped stripping out the escape sequences from this uh, or rather it started to include escape sequences that the man conversion would show so the dash the curl dash dash manual output would include escape sequences for bold and underline and stuff like that and that was never intended and it made it really difficult if you would like redirect it to a file because then the file would contain all those escape sequences so now starting now the script that helps us do this fix the dash dash manual command line option it will now strip off the, those escape sequences so it will uh, show curl dash dash manual will be used without escape sequences so no bold or no italics or underline or anything because it was never meant to be there so simplified output as it was intended and as, as it used to be i don't know at what point it's uh, this uh, this regression was introduced a bit um Annoying. So anyway, and we fix another build problem. It happens on a few rare platforms where this size of curl of t is larger than the size of t, as you see here on the on the last line in the, in the presentation here. It is um, it is rare, and it's um, to have these platforms, and I think that's also why it happened because. It, we don't ha we don't have a CI build with this combination uh, for any pla uh, uh, we don't have platforms with this combination in the CI set so we didn't actually test it so we didn't detect this uh, before we released it now it is fixed uh, so now it builds on, on the even on these weird platforms unusual they are at least and uh, I fixed the um, a long time ago years ago I changed so that when you use the name localhost as a the string localhost in the URL it will act curve will actually the, uh, return a fixed um, set of addresses for that it won't use the name resolver to look it up it will just you know return colon colon one or, or uh, 127001 for IPv4 and there's a long story why but anyway uh, it of course it turns out that this function actually accidentally or stupidly returned them in the wrong order so it returned the ipv4 before the ipv6 so it would prefer the ipv4 when you connect to it while more strictly uh, and more sort of it was more intended to do it in the other way around so now it returns the ipv6 version first and ipv4 version after that so that it will try the ipv6 version first when you try you know if you write curl localhost it will now try ipv6 first if you have ipv6 support enabled which well who doesn't uh moving on here's one of the uh, reasons why we do this patch release is that we had a very silly regression in http2 upload handling because we did a little uh, optimization of the HTTP2 frame output set um, and then we missed a code path. So you could actually end up in a, uh, in a case where you would do upload with HTTP2 and you would sort of stall because it wouldn't detect the end of, end of file properly or end of upload. We did two fixes for the quiche backend for HTTP3 uh, which improved it significantly. The primary one maybe is that we now handle, we better handle multiple uh, streams over multiple connections correctly, which previously would easily end up seriously confused. We also fixed a crash related to quiche. So if you're, if you're a quiche user for HTTP3, uh, you should now be much happier. Another regression um, is was this one so when you do when you do when you use curl to go to an http resource and you use dash u to set username and, and password maybe to do 
for example, basic authentication with HTTP or HTTPS, and that page would redirect you with an absolute URL to the same origin, same, you know, same protocol, same host name, same port number. Uh, curl is supposed to send the credentials again to that or, you know, the authentication thing for basic uh, authentication to that second request to the same origin. But due to regression, I broke that in the previous release and now I fixed it again. Obviously, I didn't have a test case for that particular case. Now we do. So now we should make sure that we don't do this <laughs> regression again. I was just so convinced without checking it properly that we had a test case for this set when I modified the credentials handling slightly in the previous release. Okay, so those were pretty much the, uh, I say, I think the most important bug fixes or the most interesting or relevant or something. So we are going to remove things going forward. As I've said before, um, we have these uh, TLS libraries that we're talking about removing. There's, uh, there's a discussion going on in particular about GSKit. So we'll see where we land uh, about that or with that or whatever. And um, we are going to also move, uh, remove the support for legacy MingW version one in September. And we are going to remove support for, for some kind of, of the formatting of no proxy patterns next year long time still, but don't use space separated no proxy patterns already today. And of course, <coughs> we are looking at um, the next version after this patch release. Hopefully there will not be another patch release. I really, really don't think there will be another patch release, but we are looking forward to do an 8.3.0 release in September. And what possibly, uh, and things that we are talking about, including in this particular release, include then things I mentioned for the previous, in, in my previous video about releases. So we have IPv6, IPFS gateway support pending, it might come. It is not native IPFS, but it's support for IPFS URLs in the curl tool, if you have a uh, IPFS gateway set up or pointing to an IPFS gateway. We're discussing ways to allow dot .onion names in for the resolver in curl. We haven't really worked out how to do it. If you really, really need to resolve dot .onion host names in curl, get involved and tell us your opinion and, and uh, how to, how you think we should allow it or do it or whatever. Because there isn't this RFC that says tools and, and name resolvers should not resolve that onion for obvious reasons, I hope. And um, then there's this team of people who says, well, I have a use case and I need to resolve it. So we have those conflicting desires and wills. So we need to sort of work it out somehow. We are adding support for this fancy command line variables concept that I've talked about in the past it'll allow you to set and use variables on the command line and in config files. So we're going to hopefully see that in the next release. And we're going to do this new way to output dash W outputs to save dash W outputs in a specific file instead of just standard out standard error. And that's this uh, percent file uh, operator thing where might go and we might see libproxy support going forward. There's a discussion there too about libproxy. There's another library too that also offers similar functionality. And there's a discussion about what kind of API we want from these libraries and how we could, uh, well, integrate support for them in, in libcurl the best or the sort of the best way or a way to that we accept that we think is fine. We're not quite there yet, but there's a discussion going. So if you want to, if you want to have automatic proxy detection in, in curl, get involved and, and tell us your opinion and help out with it. And as I mentioned about removing things, we're planning to drop support for NSS, remove every all traces of NSS in curl. That's 3000 lines of code, something. And we are talking about dropping support for GSKit, the TLS library. 
maybe more debated and a little bit more heated might not happen but that's also over 2000 lines of code if you have any opinions of any of this uh, get involved on the in the um, on github or on the mailing lists we are aiming for doing this 8.3.0 release on september 13 so that's seven weeks from now all the release notes for this coming um, release is going to be all of them are going to be automatically added to this url as usual as they are always so you can follow that to see what we plan and intend to ship in the next release if you do anything commercially with curl and you want support that's exactly what i do all day for a lot of companies these days so get in touch and um, i can help you fix your problems and streamline whatever you do with curl commercially and if you find or any bugs in curl go to github and submit an issue and we will sort of help you assist you and you can help us fix it if you have found or suspect a security problem in curl go to hackerone.com slash curl and provide us with all the information we actually have a pending a security announcement for the next release so this is a concept that works and we are we have this bug bounty right so we're paying cash for reporters who report bugs security problems that we confirm are security problems um, right now 2400 usd for you if it's a medium severity level security problem and finally these are the fun sp uh, fine sponsors of curl uh, this month so thank you it is thanks to these fine companies that we can keep on doing curl the way we do and uh, this is curl 8.2.1 july 26 2023 and um, i will see you again in a release soon bye